Hey, well, welcome back. This is session two of um, small group leadership training here at the Christian Life Center. Uh, my name is Pastor Gary, if we haven't met yet. It's just great to have you interested in leading a small group. And so we want to try to give you tools that you can use so you can get your group up and running. So if you got a chance to listen to session one and hear Pastor Josh's video, he talked about the fact that a sustainable model for a small group is actually when all the group members bring their gifts together and, um, and we find that there's an apostle and a prophet, an evangelist, a teacher, a shepherd, all these different gifts come to bear in a small group. So I want to start off by just making a couple points about that because again, you know, we're looking at the fact that when you form your team, that's really the backbone of a small group ministry. Uh, if you have a team that's, you know, just you, then it's really not a group. So keep remembering it's a group and not just you. And the more that people bring their gifts to bear, the more satisfied and the more a part of things they're going to feel. I, I remember years ago, um, I was pastoring a small church in Flagstaff, Arizona, and we had some people that had just sort of come, you know, had become parts of the church. They had joined, actually, and we, were, we usually had like a fifth Sunday potluck at that church. We had probably about 150 people and we'd meet in the fellowship hall and eat. And well, anyway, these, this new family, everybody kept saying to them, Hey, you know, just come. We're so glad you're here. Just don't worry about bringing any food or anything. Just come and, and we'll, we'll treat you like, you know, guests and all that kind of thing. And, and at, at the end of the potluck, I talked to the family and said, so how did this feel? And they said, well, it felt sort of bad. We felt like we were guests. We didn't feel like we we're really a part of things. And and I realized that the more we actually invite people to engage and we say, hey, we need you to show up and we need you to bring this or that, the more they feel a part of things. So, so don't be afraid to ask because again, I think this is part of what helps people to feel like they're really contributing, bringing something to the table that's of value to the whole group. So we started looking at the whole model of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, the shepherd. And, and one thing I wanna do, I guess sort of bring home again is that you know each of these gifts are not in themselves the whole church. The church becomes the makeup of all of these gifts together. So the clear and simple fact is that apostles need others, prophets need others, teachers, all of these different roles and gifts need others. And so be thinking about that because that's an important part of what's happening in your group. Now, the main thing that I want to talk about today in this second session are the ABCs of small groups. And you can see here, we've got the word accountability, biblical community, and care. For us here at CLC, this is really sort of our definition of small groups. If a small group doesn't have in it accountability, biblical community, and care, then, then it's not necessarily a small group. It could be a ministry group. It could be um, that it is a... Um, a kind of class or something, but we're looking at these things as really important parts of, you know, what does it mean to be in a small group together? So I'm going to start off with A, accountability, and just sort of unpack that, and then we'll move on to biblical community and care. But accountability, you know, one of the things that happens in a small group is that we actually are in a group that's small enough that we can encourage each other, support each other, and even challenge each other. And that's really important. You know, a small group is a safe place for people to ask questions about God they've never felt comfortable asking anywhere else. And the more that they get to know each other, the more those questions will freely come. And that's a real gift. So I want you to think about, you know, how are we accountable to each other in small groups? In, in a small group, because of the relational context, we can actually sometimes ask that hard question or we can say, hey, listen, let me go with you this week when you go to do that. Let me, let me partner with you, be with you in that. And I think that it's easy for us, for example, you know, imagine a Sunday morning here at Cell C. Well, you walk into the service, it's pretty, it's pretty crowded. There's a lot of people around. You may sit next to somebody you know, or you may not. It may be that the people in front of you are different than last week, the people behind you are different than last week. You know, it's a, it's a changing crowd. You can't, you cannot connect deeply when we got 500 people or 600 people in a Sunday morning worship service. It just doesn't happen there. But when you begin to get into a small group with other people, then you can really connect um, in meaningful and good ways. And it gives you a chance to share life. I mean, 
you know, there's an old saying that we actually use in Celebrate Recovery that I, I think is so true of all of us, and that is that the only people that aren't hurting are people that you don't know very well. So what that means is we're all hurting, like we all struggle, and, and yet some of us, we really have a good facade that sort of hides that, and um, people don't know. And for me as a pastor, one of the saddest things is finding out that somebody's been struggling for years, but they were afraid to say anything, because I often think, gosh, there's so much that could have been done in support and encouragement, you know, had we known earlier that they were struggling. So, so this small group allows you an opportunity to really get to know each other. There's passage in Proverbs that I think is just really pertinent to this whole accountability issue. It says this, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. So a small group environment allows us to actually encourage each other, sharpen each other, um, be able to find ways of encouraging each other that, that really aren't going to happen on a Sunday morning. So, so that's the accountability part. You know, I've, I've known, um, or one of the stories I heard on Right Now Media, which was really, I think, a pertinent story, was this one couple uh, had been a part of a small group but had never really shared any of their struggles. And so at the next small group meeting, the husband and wife both decided they needed to sort of come clean with the group and share that they'd been struggling. And so they did. And, and they were a little bit afraid to do that. They weren't sure how the group would handle it. But the great thing was that when they did that, then somebody else in the group said, you know what, I've been struggling too with a similar thing. And somebody else said, hey, you know what, I've been struggling too. And, and that group actually took um, a step into going deeper together because they were vulnerable enough to actually be accountable and share, you know, here's where we're at. So remember again that everybody's got stuff, they're just not sure where it's safe to bring that out. So as much as it is possible, uh, provide an environment of safety for your group members. That will just really be important to them. The second thing is that we also are going to focus on biblical community. You know, um, a small group is not just a place where we get together and talk about like the latest political view of something. It's actually a place where we are centered around the presence of Jesus Christ, the living word who's right there with us. But it's also a place where we can search the scriptures and we can see what it is that God has to say about how we should live our lives. Now, I have a premise. It's a pretty, it's a pretty big premise, but I think it's really true. And that is that God, who created us, knows more about how we should live than we do. That's, that's my premise. So I sort of have this knowledge that, you know, God set up life for us. God said, here's what I think would be good for you. Here's what I think would be harmful for you. And we sort of went our own way. We did our own thing and we fell into the harmful side of things. But even with that, God's gracious and brings about redemption and calls us back and, and restoration and all these things that we've been talking about on Sunday morning. So, so God understands better than we do how life should be lived. And one of the things that God says is, you know, I want to have this relationship with you and I want you to have a relationship with others so that you can live a healthy, productive life. In fact, I think Jesus really says it um, when he's talking in John 10. He says, I have come that you might have life in abundance. He's, he's not saying, you know, I want you to have a mediocre life or sort of just skid through or make it through, slide through. I want you to really be able to embrace life and find that I'm a good God who wants to walk with you. So, so biblical community is really important for us. It, it means that we're going to search the scriptures together. We're going to think about what we're studying together. We're going to encourage each other and comfort each other and, and be there for each other in the midst of it. And that the truth that we speak into each other's lives is going to come out of God's revealing that and, and making that known to us through the Bible. So, so I want you to encourage you in that. Now, we have here um, a group subscription to Right Now Media. And I'll talk about this more later, but I want you to start searching Right Now Media. And if you're not connected to that, let me know. We'll get you connected. But start looking for studies that resonate with you. Now, a lot of you have already done this. And so if you haven't done it yet, I would encourage you to do it so that you can begin to think about what studies your group might do. The third thing then, is we also want to foster a, a sense of care in our groups. You know, there's a great passage in Acts chapter two. In fact, pretty soon, I think even this weekend, Josh is gonna preach on this. It says this, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching, to the fellowship and to the sharing of meals and to prayer. And a deep sense of awe came over them 
And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place, and they shared everything they had. Continuing, it says, they sold their property and possessions, shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So you see, one of the things that was really true of the um, early church was that they looked to each other to care for each other. So we've realized too that sort of our front line of care for each other in our congregation really comes through the small groups because the small group is the place where I can know others and be known and where care automatically happens. I, I was a pastor of a, a church plant out here in Pennsylvania and I was in a new members class sort of leading that and, and a woman mentioned that she was going to the hospital that week and I, I could tell the way she was mentioning it that she was really sort of hoping that the male pastor wouldn't come visit her. And so I was just sort of quiet about it, but I was feeling a lot of angst because I thought, oh, I'm the pastor, I should go see her. You know, how do I do this? I don't wanna intrude in a place that might be embarrassing. And so I was feeling all this, you know, sort of conflict within me. And, um, and so as we broke from the group and began to have refreshments, sort of fellowship time, um, one of the women in the group said, hey, how would it be if I came and visited you? And, and this woman that was gonna have the surgery said, that would be wonderful, thank you. And I was like, ah, but, but you know, it's such a great reminder because the reality is that we are a body together. Like, you know, we are the hands, the feet, the head, all the things that, of Jesus. Jesus works through us to be able to help us to understand who God's called us to be. And we get a chance to minister to each other. So, so I wanna encourage you to think about you know, how are you caring for each other? A, a lot of times this comes through sharing prayer requests and things like that, but, but think about other things. Like for example, you know, if somebody's moving, the group can help move. If somebody's going through a hard time and they need somebody to watch kids, the group can help watch kids. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can be done. Um, if somebody um, ends up having another child and there's a need for meals, small groups often come and provide meals. I mean, that's just a, a great, outpouring a result of being in community together. So, so I want you to continue to think about those things. And as you're diving deeper into small group life, one of the things you're going to want to do is you're going to, or you're going to need to actually explain to your group um, how you're going to function. And so these are some of the things that are pieces for how you're going to, going to function. Now I'm going to send you two things, or I'm going to post two things along with these videos. One of them is a covenant to think through because one of the things you'll have to decide in your small group is how you're going to function with certain things. Like for example, are you going to actually have kids come or not come? Um, are you going to have all the kids downstairs while all the adults are upstairs? You're going to have to decide if you're going to eat dinner together once in a while or if you're simply going to have refreshments or maybe not going to have any refreshments at all. Um, all of these different things are important. You're going to have to decide where you're going to meet. Some groups are meeting here at the church. Other groups are meeting at home. So you'll have to decide all of those things. And when you get together in your first meeting, those are good conversation pieces for the whole group. It helps everybody to buy into what's going on. The other thing I'm going to send you is actually a definition of small groups. And um, it's a great, you know, how definition, I love sort of pregnant definitions that you have to take a phrase out and sort of, you know, define that as well. So I'm going to send you a really, I think, robust definition of small groups so you can see again, you know, what it is that we're looking at. But remember that primarily we are talking about, you know, getting in out of rows into circles where we can be accountable to each other. We can care for each other. We can form biblical community together. So, all right. Well, thanks a lot for being in the second session. And um, I'm going to move into the third one and I'll make sure that you can get that as well. So uh, blessings to you as you lead this group. We're so excited about your willingness to do this. All right. Talk to you later.